Welcome to This New Life. We are so glad you are watching this program and you are with us today. And I believe with all my heart that God has something for you. Um, and today we have a great uh, visitor. Um, his name is Jonathan, Jonathan Reynerson. He's a husband, a family father. Uh, he's a businessman and he is involved in so many things. And then he's also a believer in Jesus Christ. Jonathan, thank you for coming. We are so glad you are here. You are very welcome. Jonathan, I made a short introduction. Yes. Share a little bit more about who you are. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Jonathan, as you said. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the oldest one of uh, four siblings. Uh, I have a little brother and a little sister and a little sister more. Uh, I work in sales uh, in an IT company, and that's uh, about it. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm uh, involved uh, in, in the church, Yeah. Uh, and I'm a believer of Good. Jesus, as you said. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, your roots is from Asia. Yes. Tell us how it all started, where, where your roots is really coming from. Yes, um, I'm, uh, I'm born in Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, but my parents, they are from uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, they came to Denmark uh, 32 years ago. Uh, 30, 32 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when they came here, uh, they were Hindus. And they, they came here because of the, the civil war in uh, Sri Lanka. So they had to, to leave Sri Lanka because of the war, and then mm. they came to Denmark. Mm. So they were refugees. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's their story? Uh, well, their story is that they they were very very uh, involved in uh, in the Hindu religion. Uh, they they believed uh, a whole lot in that, and and uh, my dad was supposed to be one of the the pastors in the in the Hindu. A temple in Sri Lanka, but but he left that and and, and came to Denmark and and continued on believing uh, in the Hindu religion, uh, mm -hmm. and my mom as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, what then? Well, uh, my my brother was born in uh, in ninety five, and he was very very ill uh, when he was born, uh, and and the doctors they said that uh, they couldn't do anything. Uh, to help him or to save him, and then uh, my my parents they started to to offer a lot of things and and to sacrifice a lot of things to these Hindu gods, and uh, and in in the Hindu religion when when you get married you get this uh, big gold necklace, and and that's like the the sign for this this marriage, uh, and they offered that as well, and that was the most expensive thing that they owned, and nothing happened. Uh, and they really believe that if they offer this uh, this gold necklace, that that my brother would get healed, but but uh, nothing happened uh, at all. Mm -hmm. um, but my my dad's cousin, uh, he's uh, he was a believer in uh, in Jesus, and he came uh, and visited my parents and uh, said uh, prayed for my brother, and then he told my 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 mom and dad to to go to the hospital and and, and to see if everything was okay. So they went on, uh, they went to the hospital and, and they checked my brother and uh, somehow everything was uh, perfectly fine with my brother and he hmm. was healed. Hmm. And, uh, and from that moment, uh, my parents started to believe in, uh, in Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, that's powerful. Yes. So uh, right there and then your dad just turned his heart to Jesus and started to follow him. That must have been quite a decision for him to make. Yes, uh, my, my dad, um, he used to, to be very involved in, uh, in this Hindu religion uh, and he actually hated Christian people. So, so uh, on Sundays when they went to church, he would stand on the opposite side of the road and yell at them hmm. and, uh, and throw stones at them sometimes when they, when they went to the church. So, so he had a lot of uh, uh, anger against, uh, towards uh, Christian people. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so for him it was a big change uh, because he had to now to, to go to the same church and, and visit the same people that he had uh, thrown stones uh, against. Hmm. Yeah, so that was a, a big change. Right. Yeah. And what about your mom? Did she also become a, a believer? No, she didn't. She actually uh, she didn't believe. She, she, she uh, stuck to, to the Hindu religion for, for two years. And then uh, two years after, uh, at a uh, Christian service, 
uh, God was speaking to her. She heard God's voice in her head. Uh, and at that moment, she knew that she had to to uh, to follow Jesus. What did God say to her? Uh, he said, uh, "I'm here. You know, I'm here, and I love you." Mm. Uh, and and my mom, uh, she's um, she started to cry because she could hear this voice very, very, very loud and clear inside her head. Mm -hmm. And she was looking around, and nobody was saying anything at, at the service. Mm -hmm. She just heard it inside her head. Mm -hmm. So, so in the beginning, she thought something was wrong, but but she felt this peace, mm -hmm. and then she started to believe. Sounds like that God spoke in two different ways to your family. Yeah. One way to your dad in doing a miracle yes. in your brother's life, mm -hmm. completely healing him. Uh, and that was maybe the way your dad needed to to experience uh, Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And your mom in a totally different way yes. like that. Yeah. Now, how many years ago is this? This is... Uh about 25 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So now for 25 years they have been attending a, a Christian fellowship and they have been worshiping Jesus as their savior and their lord. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think I think the the big difference is that my my dad he when he was a, a Hindu, he used to drink a lot. Okay. So he was uh, drinking all the time and and as far as I remember back I wasn't that old. I was about four or five years. I always remember that my dad was yelling a lot when he got home from drinking with his friends and he was very aggressive. He had a lot of temper. And that's one of the things that changed like this. Hmm. Uh, when he started to believe, hmm. he he threw away all of his uh, drinks and alcohol and beers and everything in the sink. Hmm. And then he started to believe. And and the peace, uh, there was like a, a whole another peace in our, our home. Hmm. Um, and I think that that meant a lot for my mom. Uh, my mom was she's uh, very um, calm, and and she was uh, experiencing a, a new husband, mm. a husband who wasn't uh, angry and mm. didn't lose his temper and, and mm. stuff like that. Mm. So so that was a, a very very big change in in our family. Wow. Yeah. So it was a different family you grew up in. <coughs> yes. Yeah. It was. Um, but what about yourself? Now you told how your parents came to, to Jesus and how yes. he changed everything. Um, but what about you? Now you sit here 30 plus years old yes. and at a certain point you must have also made some decisions. Yes, I did. Uh, I was, uh, you know, as I said before, I, I grew up in this uh, a high-tempered environment and, and with a family with with uh, a lot of different things um, you know a, a dad who was yelling and mad and drinking and everything and suddenly everything changed so for me after four or five years everything started to be more peaceful uh, and I started to wonder where where did this peace come from uh, and then uh, we we went to these uh, services on Sundays in the church and, and uh, I started to learn more and more about Jesus and I saw some of his miracles uh, in the church. I saw people uh, got, get, get healed uh, and, and I started to, to wonder what is this and uh, what is going on here and I need to know more about this. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to, to read my Bible, I started to, to pray more and, uh, and just all of a sudden I, I felt this peace uh, inside as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started to, to believe. Yeah. In, in quite a young age. Yeah. Mm. But how do you know that this is something to do with Jesus and not just because that you live in a great family and things is taken care of uh, of you? <clears throat> I know it because uh, I know that, that Jesus has changed my family's life because I, I was uh, going to bed uh, the, the most of the, the, the first years of my life crying. And, and being sad because my dad was mad. And everything changed like this mm. when Jesus entered our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, uh, actually I have an experience where, where I, was, uh, I was praying for, for an older man and I saw his legs starting to grow. Mm. And I can't do that, I know that I can't do that. I know that somebody is doing something and, then, and that's Jesus. Mm. I know that Jesus can, can heal people and, uh, and I saw that with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a very, very uh, strong experience for me. Mm. Yeah. What does it mean to you that you read in the Bible on a regular basis? 
It means that uh, I get uh, inspired uh, first of all, and and I get, get some guidelines to to how to live my life. Uh, I know that I can uh, I can um, if I read in the Bible, I can feel the love from from God in His words, uh, and and that's why I read in the Bible, and that's mm -hmm. the reason why I read in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you also pray? Yes, uh, I. Yes, I do. I, I pray uh, every day. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But uh, how is that working for you? I mean, um, Hindus is going to specific places. Yes. As a Muslim in their religion, it's uh, praying is in, the, in a certain time or a certain position and so. How is your prayer life working? Uh, sometimes uh, when you pray, you just pray and you don't feel anything or hear anything and in other times you can pray and you can feel this peace and you can feel God's presence. Sometimes you pray for, for things to happen and and, uh, and sometimes you just you're just thankful for the day or, or whatever and you can pray. I pray uh, when I go to work uh, in the car. Sometimes I pray when I get home, uh, uh, but mostly I pray in the morning uh, when so, I get up. So you really believe that you can pray at any time at any physical position, yes. at any place? Yes, anywhere. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I believe that I can pray anywhere because God is everywhere and God listens to you everywhere. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are, mm -hmm. no matter the circumstances, He will always listen to you when you pray. Mm. Yeah. Well, if we go a little bit backwards to your, yeah. your, your parents' testimony of uh, how somebody prayed and then uh, they started to pray themselves and so. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody watching this yes. and they say, mm, I, um, I don't believe in this Jesus and so uh, what is this praying about? Can I pray to him or, mm -hmm. or something like that? What would you tell such a person? I will, I will tell them to, to, uh, to fold their hands uh, and uh, close their eyes and, and uh, think about the, the circumstance. Think about what, what is affecting you right now and just starting to, to put that into words to God. And then God will, will listen and you will, uh, you will, God will, will hear you and He will uh, answer that prayer. But how can you make sure that it's not a, a, another religion's God that you're praying to? How I can make sure that... Yeah. It, uh, uh, <laughs> That's a that's a good question. Um, I would say that if you if you say the name Jesus mm. uh, in the name uh, Jesus, there's a lot of power. Mm. Uh, so so if you say Jesus, I I need you to help me. Right. I need you to to know what I'm feeling right now, what I'm going through right now. Right. You're praying to Jesus. Yeah. And that's. Like we read in the Bible where Jesus said, if you pray in my name. Exactly. You know? Yes. So in that way, that's how you are sure that your prayers yes. is being directed exactly. to Jesus and to God. Exactly. Mm, I think that was really key, <laughs> yeah. key thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, whether they are, have been following Jesus for many years or have even maybe rejected him, mm. anyone can start to pray exactly. to Jesus yes. in his name. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So when being a, a believer of Jesus, it sounds like so everything is just going to be glorious and smooth and uh, no clouds and no problems or anything yeah. like that. Is that how you experienced it? Uh, I, I would love to say yes, but that's <laughs> not uh, that's not how it is. Okay. Uh, we, uh, I still uh, go through uh, bad days, uh, bad experiences and stuff like that. That's just uh, how it is. Okay. Yeah, that's life. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know you're married and you have a yeah. wonderful son and yes. uh, we have the privilege of knowing you, mm -hmm. you and your family. Yeah. And um, I do know that some years back you had quite a powerful uh, experience. Yes. Your wife especially. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, I will. Um, my, my wife, uh, she was uh, diagnosed with uh, gluten intolerance. So she was uh, quite sick for, for some years, actually. Mm. Uh, and then uh, we went to, uh, to a church service, and we were just attending, just sitting on, on the lines and just uh, attending the meeting. And then uh, the, the pastor of this, this meeting, he just uh, looked at my wife and said, you, you right there, I have a word for you. Uh, and she was like, me, are you talking to me? And he was like, yes, you. And he said, uh, you are healed. You are healed at this in this moment. Uh, you have a, a sickness. Are, are you gluten intolerant? And we never met this this pastor before. He was from a, another country, 
So it was, it was a very uh, special uh, experience. He said, God is telling me, me right now, you are healed. And then she was healed. Hmm. Uh, just at that moment, she, she was healed. So she has been able to eat anything, even with gluten ever since? Exactly. So that must be, that was quite a turnaround. How many years ago is this? This is like uh, four or five years ago. And it's still lasting? Yes. There's not been one day where there's been... No, no. Everything is perfect. So Jesus has truly healed her? Yes. So do you really believe that, that healing is something that people can experience? Yes, I do. Isn't it that just because that you are a favorite great couple that this happened to you? <laughs> no. no, no, it's not like that. Hmm. Uh, Jesus can heal anybody. Okay. Yeah. So even if we pray right here now, yes. you believe I people believe sitting in their living room or wherever they are, yes. watching this can believe for Jesus to heal them? I believe that 100%. Really? Yes. So if you're sitting here watching this right now, and maybe you are sick in your body, why don't you take the chance and um, pray along with us as we are going to take a couple of minutes right now and pray for people who are sick. I cannot heal anyone, Jonathan cannot heal anyone, but we believe that Jesus Christ, he can. We have seen it many times. We have heard many testimonies. Today we heard it again. And um, we truly believe that, that if you come with a sincere heart and open your heart to Jesus, that uh, he knows of your sickness and your disease and he cares for you. Well, the way, when, and all of that, the healing is going to take place, we are going to leave that to him. But why don't we take a minute right now and just pray? Why don't you put your hand upon your sick body part or upon your heart right now? And then um, pray along with me as I pray and lead you in this prayer. Jesus Christ, we thank you that you truly are the miracle maker. You are the son of God, the one who has uh, power to heal and set people free. And now we pray in the name of Jesus for those who is laying their hands upon their bodies, believing for you to come and touch them, heal them and make a turn in their situation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will heal them right where they are at in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, try to test yourself and check yourself over the next few days. And if Jesus has healed you, why don't you contact our call center. The information in how to get in contact with them is uh, on the screen right now. And uh, in that way, you can even ask for more prayers or you can write or send your testimony of what, jo what Jesus has done for you. Jonathan. Yes. Wonderful testimony of how Jesus healed. But is it always just Yeehaw, and great testimonies no. of uh, things, one prayer and things is settled and done. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, I think I, I have uh, experienced uh, the opposite actually uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. And that's, uh, yeah, that's just how life is sometimes. What's, what was that? Well, uh, some years ago, uh, actually two and a half years ago, uh, we, me and my wife, we, we went through uh, an abortion. We were pregnant. And, and uh, eight weeks in, we, mm. we lost uh, the mm. child. It was a miscarriage. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that was uh, very, very hard for us and very tough. Uh, and uh, actually, I, I started to, to question God and ask him, why, why is this happening? Why mm. is this happening to me? And I felt that it was uh, very, very unfair uh, to mm. me and towards my family. I, I, I recall it as, as uh, the child that was miscarried was just on the edge that it could survive or it could die. Uh, it was how many weeks? This was, this was uh, actually uh, eight weeks in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, one year after we, ah. got, we got pregnant again. Right. Uh, and this time uh, we went through, uh, I think he was uh, 22 weeks years old mm. uh, in my wife's stomach. And, mm. and uh, suddenly she, she felt like she, she had to give birth. Yeah. So we went to the hospital and, uh, and, and we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't stop it and we couldn't uh, do anything. So she gave birth to a very, very young boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and he managed to, to survive for 12 hours. And uh, he uh, was fighting a lot to, to stay alive, uh, stay alive. And, 
but he didn't survive, and mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, he he died uh, 12 uh, 12 uh, hours after he was born. Mm. Um, Must have been a really yes painful uh, time and situation yeah. with a lot of tears. Yes, uh, we cried a lot uh, in those days, and we were very, very sad, and, mm. and it was very, very frustrating. Right. Uh, and I knew from from the earlier miscarriage that that I was I was I actually got very mad the last time. So for me, I was I was a bit afraid what was going to happen with me. Uh, would I get mad again? Would I get mad at God? And what what would happen? Um, so I was in in those days. I was praying a lot. I was praying a lot to to God that He would uh, fill us with His peace, uh, and and uh, happily He did. Uh, it was a very very tough and painful experience, but God has been very very faithful to to us with His peace, mm-hmm. uh, and it says in uh, in His word that He will overcome us with overnaturally peace mm-hmm. if we pray for it, mm-hmm. and uh, that's what He's been uh, doing to to me and my wife uh, and our little son. Mm-hmm. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. So in the midst of this really horrible situation, that of course you had hoped to avoid. Yeah. And of course had um, hoped for a, a, a different a solution somehow yes. in it. Yeah. In the midst of that, you felt God was still there, present. Yes. Uh, we, we we felt God was was. Uh, was taking care of us. It was like he was holding us very, very close to him. Uh, and instead of us getting mad or anything, he just he just filled uh, our room and our family with peace. Mm. And and that's that's uh, how God works sometimes. Uh, in, in the midst of difficult situations and everything, God is there. God mm. is always there. Mm. And and we felt that in a in a very very uh, peaceful way. Mm. Yeah. Well, in situations like that, we, we we really realize how fragile we as human beings yes. are, you yeah. know, yeah. and how weak actually yeah. how things can take a turn tomorrow yeah. that we could not see coming exactly. and things like that. So, if if people watching this program is sitting going through experiences like that, maybe loss of a loved one or a miscarriage like you experienced or terrible things. And they may, may even have been calling on Jesus for help. And so, what? What's your advice? What What is your word? What would you comfort them with? Uh, I would say that that for us, that was the that was the the worst experience we ever experienced. That was the worst situation ever for us, and and we never uh, felt more alone than we did in that in that moment. Uh, and I think we can do. Uh, people can do that in in different uh, circumstances and and so on. Uh, and and when you pray to God, even in those situations, God will be there. Even though that you feel alone, God will always be faithful. And and my advice, if if I can uh, do that, uh, I'll say that, um, would be to to pray, mm-hmm. to to uh, tell people around you to to pray for you. And then uh, God will will show His peace, and mm-hmm. God will take you through that uh, moment. So what you're saying is praying in the name of Jesus, and we'll believe that the peace of Jesus yes. is going to come and comfort in these situations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great advice. Yeah. <laughs> If you're sitting in this situation, uh, maybe you lost a loved one, or or maybe um, you're in a really a situation where things is hurtful and life is painful, why don't you take this advice to your heart and and pray to Jesus, asking him in the midst of this storm you're going through to come with his peace. We don't always have all the answers and why did that happen and why did that not happen? But in the midst of all of it, we do know that Jesus is still with us and that he loves us and he will be with us. Maybe you sit watching this program And you say, but I don't know if I've ever have Jesus come into my heart and my life and being my savior. Do you know his salvation is just one prayer away from you? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the way to God. Not a way, but the way to God. Jesus is the one that we need to have into our heart, that we need to make our savior and our Lord, and then he will come and save us. 
That's going to bring God into our life, into our hearts even. And secondly, it's going to mean eternity for you. It's going to cause that Jesus Christ is going to save your soul. So when the day comes, that it's going to be your final day, then you'll have an eternity with him ahead of you. It's only one prayer away. Why don't you, as we close with a word of prayer, and if you say, I want to make Jesus Christ my savior, I need to. Why don't you put your hand upon your heart right now and then pray out loud this same prayer as I'm going to lead you in right now. Jesus Christ, I believe you are the son of God. I come to you, save me, forgive my sins, be my savior, be my Lord. I will follow you. I will worship you every day the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you prayed this prayer from your heart, then Jesus did hear this prayer from his heart. Now let me give you three simple advices that will help you to stay close to Jesus. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. Don't pray to any other name. Pray to the name of Jesus. He is the way to God in heaven. It's simply like talking with your best friend. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any position, at any place. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. Maybe you don't have a Bible or uh, then maybe you know of somebody who has a Bible. Why don't you ask that person if you can read in the Bible together? Or maybe you have a smartphone. Do you realize that for free you can download the entire Bible in your language and then you have the Bible? And simply just make it one of your daily routine that you on a regular basis just read some in the Bible and in that way that will help you to stay close to Jesus. And number three, you need to be part in a fellowship of others who's also worshiping Jesus. Maybe there's such a fellowship somewhere in your neighborhood that you know of. Why don't you go and ask if you could be part of that fellowship? Or maybe you know of somebody who's also following Jesus. Maybe you and that person can, can sit together and share with um, about your faith. And if you say, I don't know any, where I live, there is no fellowships like that, then why don't you stay tuned on these programs on this channel? And in that way, this can be your fellowship where you'll get to worship and know more about Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching this new life. May God bless you and may he be with you. See you next week.